Force equals mass times acceleration. Sir Isaac Newton. The Flash is unbelievably, absurdly powerful. Here's why. Back in the 1600s, a man named Gottfried Leibniz was busy revolutionizing physics. He came up with many equations, one of which was for kinetic energy. The energy is equal to half of mass times velocity squared. Basically, if you hit something really fast or with a lot of weight behind it, it will end up dealing more damage. This is where the Flash comes in. The Flash is DC Comics' premier speedy superhero. A scientist named Barry Allen was working on a particle accelerator at a place called Star Labs. When it exploded, struck him with a bolt of lightning, and then sent him into a coma. When he woke up, he realized he was able to run at incredible speed. There are also two other incarnations of the Flash, but Barry Allen is generally the most popular. He's able to run around at speeds between somewhat faster than normal and the literal speed of light, depending on who's writing. Seems reasonable for a sidekick character in the Justice League, right? Okay, now let's get into how the Flash is unbelievably, omnipotently powerful. Barry Allen is a walking nuclear bomb. Let's revisit the question of power. Let's say you're punching with the energy of an adult human. That'd be about 250 to 300 joules. A professional boxer might be between 1200 to 1500. A handful of those punches is enough to kill somebody. That's a reference point. Kinetic energy equals half times mass times velocity squared. Now, let's say the Flash is going kind of slow. He's running at, say, a bit under the speed of sound. That's 343 meters per second, so let's say 300 meters per second, or about 600 miles per hour. That's our velocity. Now, for mass. Let's say the Flash is doing something to maximize the weight that will be hitting the target. For example, a headbutt. Barry Allen weighs 195 pounds, or about 88 kilograms. 88 times 0 0.5 is 44, so now we take 300, square it, and multiply it by 44 to get 3.9 million joules. That's 15,000 times stronger than a normal human punch. That's like 3,000 punches from Mike Tyson in one. That's about one kilogram of TNT. For some reference, here's what a kilo of dynamite looks like. Every time the Flash does a running punch, he's basically hitting with the force of a small bomb. But that's not all, because we can go wilder. Speed of sound is not Barry Allen's maximum speed. He can go much, much faster over the speed of light. How about we up his velocity to a casual jog? About 1% of that. The speed of light is 299,782,458 meters per second. 1% of that would be roughly 3 million meters per second, for simplicity. Now we have our velocity. Square it and we get 9 times 10 to the 12th. Then we multiply it by half of his weight, 44, to get holy mother of Christ 3.96 times 10 to the 14 joules. That's more like 100,000 kilograms of TNT. That's about triple the energy of the nuclear bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki combined, with one punch. And he doesn't even need a running start. Even if he's perfectly still, the speed and weight of his arm should be more than enough to completely obliterate anything that tries to capture him. He could wiggle his ears at 1% the speed of light, and the resulting shockwave would be more than enough to annihilate basically anything. At any point, Barry Allen can practically turn any part of his body into a massive explosive. Now let's get into problem number two, friction. There are two problems here. Number one, due to heat coming from friction, if the Flash ever slips and falls or rubs his suit up against a villain when punching them, then he is going to produce a ton of heat or electrical energy, therefore exploding into a giant fireball. Since this doesn't happen, we can assume he is an extreme resistance to both of those forms of energy. The second problem with friction is that the Flash needs to run across something. Let's say it's concrete. Newton's third law of motion states that with every action comes an equal and opposite reaction. This would mean that when you run, your feet would launch the surface you run backward with equal force. However, due to friction and your body weight pulling toward the ground, it instead stays grounded and you stay still. You're moving slow enough that you can still find traction on the ground and move forward. This is not true for Barry Allen. At high enough speeds, the concrete under your feet would break, shattering behind you. You would launch off of it, continuing to run, but that rock would go off flying. Since it was just scraped along a surface with friction at incredible speed, most likely it would also be set on fire alongside being launched behind you at the speed of sound. Not to mention, like a meteor entering orbit, 
friction against the air would cause Barry Allen to massively heat up the area surrounding him. As he runs, the Flash will become a gigantic fireball that shoots flaming shrapnel behind him. In addition, if the Flash ever wants to turn, it would involve him coming to a complete stop using friction. The extreme heat underneath his feet would melt the ground beneath him and send it flying. Being able to survive all of that means that he must have an extraordinary resistance to heat. By the way, I'm not considering body heat as an issue. Since he can tap into the speed force and perceives time passing at a slower rate, I'm assuming that he's functionally running at a normal speed and therefore would not boil from the inside. Problem number three, the sound barrier. Sonic booms are loud, about as loud as a rock concert apparently. Long enough exposure to sounds like these can cause permanent hearing loss. While not as big as something like a jet plane, bullets move significantly faster than the sound barrier and also make quite a loud sound, to the point that most people who shoot larger guns have to wear ear protection. The sound inside the barrel is not actually the gunpowder going off, but actually of the bullet breaking the sound barrier by a significant amount. The barrier is 767 miles per hour, and the bullet can travel at 2 to 3 thousand. Barry Allen is faster than a bullet, but with significantly more mass and surface area. So the sound he would create when breaking the barrier would be ungodly loud, and by my estimation, more than enough to instantly deafen anybody in a cone behind him. In addition, the actual force of the shockwave would cause a current of wind that would launch backward in a cone shape, blasting anything behind him off into the distance. Now, all of that is bad enough. What I'm more worried about, however, is the fact that he can survive all of that. Since every action has an equal and opposite reaction, whenever he punches, the Flash is taking an equal amount of damage to what he did. It should break every bone in his body a thousand times over and cause him to explode into a steaming pile of goo. And yet, he's fine. When he runs or changes direction, he should be exploding into a giant fireball, yet when he stops, he's unharmed. He should be deaf a thousand times over by now, and yet he could hear just as well as the average person. All of this means that the Flash is nearly invincible, almost completely unkillable. Which begs the question. Let's say Barry Allen goes crazy and tries to kill everybody. It happens to every superhero at some point due to brainwashing or a simple mental break. How do you stop him? The answer? You don't. You can't. Let's say he moves at 1% the speed of light, punching the air left and right. Considering that he's the fastest man alive, nothing will be able to catch him. Considering his immense power, nothing will be able to stop him. He could run around the world, causing enormous detonations left and right, and kill every human on the planet in 10 minutes. It's been stated that he could clear out the entire city of Tokyo, which is 37 million people, in 30 seconds. And that's if he's individually carrying people out. Superman is fast and tough, sure, but not as fast as the Flash. Not even close. He could gather up all of the kryptonite on the planet and throw it at Superman without him even being able to react. The Flash has the speed force, which allows him to move faster than the speed of light. Let's break out the equation to end all equations. Let's see what happens when Barry Allen moves at two thirds of the speed of light. One half mass times velocity squared is useful for most speeds, but technically speaking, it's only an approximation. Instead, we're going to have to use the Lorenz factor to figure out the Flash's true power. This modification allows you to calculate the energy of an object moving at a significant fraction of the speed of light. In this case, two thirds. First, we take the mass of the object, 88 kilograms, and cut it in half to get 44. Then we multiply it by the speed of light squared. This is already a huge number, but we have to do the stuff on the bottom too. We then divide it by the square root of 1 minus the velocity of our object squared, 2 thirds the speed of light, divided by the speed of light squared. With this equation, we can get a total energy payload of 5 times 10 to the 18 joules. The most powerful nuclear bomb ever tested was the Tsar Bomba in the Soviet Union. It had a total energy output of 2.1 times 10 to the 17 joules, meaning that the flash would be outputting 25 times that. 25 times the bomb that shattered windows 500 miles away, or the distance between Boston and Richmond. The bomb that could destroy the entire US state of Rhode Island. And he's just casually punching with 25 times that. The fat man and the little boy are left in the dust 
their combined efforts being equal to 0.003% of Barry Allen's. This is apocalyptic power. But Barry can go faster. As you approach the speed of light, the amount of energy required to get faster increases exponentially. The comics state that using the infinite well of energy that is the speed force, Barry Allen can go faster than the speed of light. This is impossible to calculate using the equation for energy, since it would hypothetically require more than infinite energy. So let's just go with 0.1 micrometers per second below the speed of light instead, which the Flash could easily handle. This energy output would be 1 million times the energy of moving at two-thirds the speed of light. It would be about 500 times the energy of the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs. It would likely compress atoms down to below the Schwarzschild radius, creating a black hole. It would be the end of the world in just one punch. But Barry Allen can go faster. Nobody really knows what would happen if an object with mass traveled at the speed of light. Hypothetically, that bit of mass would have infinite energy and therefore, on a collision, cause an infinitely big explosion of particles that are also moving infinitely fast, therefore destroying the entire universe in just one swift action. This is the true power of Barry Allen. The ability to simply delete everything with a snap of his fingers. But he doesn't. He simply chooses not to. He's too nice of a guy to kill everybody. He's too busy stopping robberies and helping old ladies get cats out of trees. He'd rather talk a villain down than obliterate them in a thermonuclear explosion. And you know what? I think that's really admirable. He's a man who's been given infinite power, and yet he chooses to simply not use it. What a nice guy. We definitely have to kill him before he turns evil. All right. Now for the outro. I completely neglected to mention the fact that the Flash can travel back in time because frankly, I don't think it's a reasonable power for him to have. Uh, you should also know that this is all in good fun. I'm not trying to insult the writers of DC or anything. And I know that the comics and show aren't really meant to be realistic. I just think it's funny applying real world physics to fictional settings. Uh, something like Minecraft would just completely implode if I tried to tackle that, for example. But it doesn't stop me from enjoying the game. I love it. Anyway, that's really it. If you hated the video, please leave a dislike and a comment telling me how I can improve my content. If you liked it, then I can't stop you from doing what you want any more than the Justice League can stop the Flash. With all that said, thank you, goodbye, and I'll see you sometime in the future.